Say you have a circuit with some current running and you're curious to know what's the value of that current? How many amperes of current is flowing? How would you figure that out experimentally? You will say, well, all I have to do is just hook up an ammeter. But here's my question. What if the ammeter did not have any readings on it? Now, how will you know how much amperes the current is? Or you'll say, hey, that's not a great ammeter. I'll buy another ammeter which has some reading. Now, here's a twist. What if there are no ammeters in this world which have any reading on it? There are no voltmeters, no galvanometers, no meters, no electric meters that have any reading on it. Now, how will you calculate the how many, you know, how, how will you calculate the strength of the current? In other words, I'm asking you, how would you invent a reading for your ammeters? How would you do that? To do this, we need to ask a deeper question. We need to ask the question, what does it even mean to say have a current of one ampere? What is the definition of one ampere? And in this video, we'll see how one could define the ampere and experimentally how one could start inventing the readings for the ammeter. Now, before we do this for current, I thought let's do the same thought experiment for a more familiar unit. Let's try doing this for a kilogram. So, a similar question. Imagine you have a weighing scale, but there are no readings on the scales. So how would you measure the weight of anything? And also, just like before, there are no weighing scales, no digital weighing scales, no kilogram stones, nothing ever in the world. Nobody has anything. So how would you, how would you start inventing a scale over here? Well, just like over here, we have to go back and ask ourselves, hey, what is the meaning of a kilogram? What does it mean to say that an object has a mass of one kilogram? What is the meaning of that? Or what is the definition of that? Well, I don't want to look, use the current definition, which is a little complicated. Let's use some historic definition. So that makes it easier to understand the concept. So a very historic definition of a kilogram was one kilogram is the mass of one liter of water. In other words, you take one liter of water and whatever is the mass of that, that by definition is one kilogram. So you know, so once I know the definition, I can set my weight, I can set my scale. So what I can do now is I can pour that entire one liter onto this. And after pouring, the scale will show something. And now I know that whatever the measurement is, it has to be by definition one kilogram. And so now that I know that this is one kilogram, I can start making my scale. And then I can use this now to build more, uh, more scales. I can use this to build my digital scales and I can use all of that. So once you know the definition, you can start building your scales. Now, of course, this definition uh, you know, is not very accurate because this means that you need to have accurately make one liter bottle. You need to make sure that you completely fill it with water and the temperature of the water, all of that matters. But don't worry too much about the accuracy. You get the concept, right? Of why definition is important to start building a scale. Now we can go back to our original question. Our original question was, how do we invent a scale to measure current? And so for that, we need to define now what one ampere is. Now my first thoughts are, hey, we know the definition of an ampere. It's one coulomb per second. This means in one second, if one coulomb of charge passes through a cross section of the wire, then I know by definition the current is one ampere. Can't I use that? Yeah, you can use that, but the problem is, do we know how, do we, how to measure a coulomb? The answer is no, we don't have any meters that measure how much coulombs of charges are passing by. So although that's a good definition, it's not a very useful one to build a scale. So we need something more experimental. And that's where Mr. Ampere comes in. Remember in a previous video, we discussed the Ampere's force law, which basically said that if you have two wires, long wires carrying current I1 and I2 separated by some distance D, and we saw that these wires will start attracting each other, and that force per unit length, force per length with which they're attracting each other is equal to mu naught I1, I2 divided by two pi D. And if you're wondering where did this come from, we've talked about this in great detail in our previous videos of force between two long straight wires. Feel free to go back and check that out. But you may be wondering, hey, what does this have to do anything with the definition? Everything, everything, my friend. So here's how Mr. Ampere is thinking. Imagine the currents in the wire was one ampere. Okay, we don't know how to measure it, but let's say the current turned out to be an ampere. Okay, if this was one ampere, 
this was one ampere. And let's say the distance between the two wires is kept at one meter. This is something I can do, okay? What would be the, what would be the value of this? Well, it's going to be, this will be one, this will be one. So we'll just get mu naught by two pi. And we know the value of mu naught. Mu naught value is four pi times 10 to the power minus seven. This two is one divided by two pi. And D is also one, so this cancels. And so now I get force per length to equal two times 10 to the power minus seven newtons per meter. And now Ampere says, aha, I can now define an Ampere. <laughs> okay, so I asked Mr. Ampere how. He says, look, take two long straight conducting wires and keep them one meter apart in vacuum. And I ask, why vacuum? Well, it turns out because the value of mu naught is four pi times 10 to the power minus seven only when that's in vacuum. So keep them one meter in vacuum and start passing some current through it. Hook up a ammeter somewhere. This is not a complete circuit. I'm sure you can build a circuit to make sure. Make sure that the current through both the wires is exactly the same. Same current flowing through both the wires. Hook up an ammeter and measure the force between the two wires. Find a way, you experimentally measure the force. Now, as you start increasing the current, the ammeter needle will start moving and the force between, the attractive force between them will start increasing, measure that, measure that. And when that force per length, per meter, force per meter is exactly two times 10 to the power minus seven newtons per meter, when that happens, I know that the current is one ampere. And so now I can put my measurements um, and I have built myself a scale. So what's the definition of an ampere? An ampere is that current, which when flows through two long straight wires, kept one meter apart in vacuum, attract each other with a force per unit length of two times 10 to the power minus seven newtons per meter. And this, my dear friends, is how we define an ampere and build a scale for measuring current. Now, one final question I had was, how do you experimentally measure the force between two wires? And I Googled and I found that there is this device that we use, you know, in, in recent modern times, we use this device called a skimble balance. And that looks super, super complex. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin to start thinking about how it works. But the concept behind this is something that can be understood, I think. So the whole idea behind this, what Ampere might have used during his time, is you have two wires kept one meter apart, one meter in length because we're calculating force per meter. So one meter in length kept one meter apart and one wire is fixed and the other wire is actually free to move a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's attached to a lever. So what happens when you start you know, putting current through it, start passing current through it, is they'll start attracting each other and because of that attraction, the, this, this wire which is allowed to move starts bending down. And now what you do is you start adding weights on the other end of that lever and you make sure that it comes back to the original position. And so once you add weights, if it has come back to the original position, this means that the weight that you added, uh, if the arm lengths are equal, the weight that you added here should be exactly equal to the force that's acting over here. And so by calculating the weights that you've added, you can then calculate the force. And this is something that Ampere used, we call it as an Ampere balance, um, to figure out the force between the two wires, force per unit length between the two wires.